In the late 1980s, all eyes were on the Germanys as the setting for a potential third world war should one kick off between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. There were of course significant non-German militaries ready to go, but West and East Germany themselves boasted significant armored forces that would have faced off against each other. This video is going to compare East and West German tank units of the time from the crew to battalion level to show what they would have been working with if the hyperwar kicked off in 1989. We'll start at the base, the tank platoon. The West Germans were relatively straightforward. They had just one tank platoon organization consisting of four tanks. Generally speaking, in 1989, tank battalions under Panzer Grenadier Brigades, the primary infantry force, were equipped with variants of the Leopard 1, primarily upgrades to the 1A1 standard, including the 1A1A1 as well as the 1A5. One of the key exceptions was the 10th Panzer Division's 30th Panzer Brigade, which had Leopard 2A4s. Tank battalions under Panzer Brigades, meanwhile, were equipped with various batch variants of the Leopard 2. Both tanks were crewed by four soldiers, a commander, gunner, loader, and driver. One tank per platoon would be commanded by the platoon leader, who would be a lieutenant in one platoon per company, and an NCO in two platoons. Tanks would be split into two half platoons or sections, one under the platoon leader and one under the deputy who was an NCO. Compare this to the East German platoon. Unlike the West Germans, the East Germans had two distinct organizations. Tank platoons part of tank regiments consisted of three tanks, while those under motor rifle regiments, the infantry force, consisted of four tanks. I haven't seen anything definitive on this matter, but I assume the infantry organizations got four tanks per platoon because four is easier to split in pairs for attachment or maneuvering through complex terrain. Three tanks had a logic to it for the eastern tank organizations because they're easier and faster to control during an armored maneuver. Additionally, in the context of a battle, a tank platoon attached to a motor rifle company may be the only tanks in a particular area, so the ability for it to provide its own overwatch may have also been a factor. A tank platoon operating under its own tank company would probably have other tank platoons supporting it, so that'd be less of a concern. There was also some added complexity with regard to tank models. Regiments part of motor rifle divisions, regardless if they were tank or motor rifle regiments, ran variants of the T-55. But the 9th Panzer Division and most of the 7th Panzer Division, East Germany's two tank divisions, were equipped with T-72s, T-72Ms, and T-72M1s from the Soviet Union, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. This extended to the tank battalion under the motor rifle regiment in each of those Panzer Divisions. So if you had a four square matrix of regiment versus division, tank platoons under tank regiments regardless of division had three tanks, and motor rifle regiments regardless of division had four. But all regiments under the Panzer divisions had T-72s by 1990, while all regiments under motor rifle divisions still had T-55s. Because the T-55 was a four-man tank with a dedicated loader, each of those platoons had between 12 and 16 crew members under a lieutenant. But T-72s were auto-loaded, so each tank only had three crew members. So those platoons had between 9 and 12 crews. At the company level, there were more similarities than differences. Both the East and West German company consisted of three tank platoons. In the East German case, these were all commanded by officers, while in the West German case, one was led by an officer and two by NCOs. Both had a headquarters element. The East had a tank for the company commander, a motorcycle for the deputy of equipment and armaments, and a Ural 375D truck for the Hauptfeldwebel and a clerk. There is also a deputy for political work in Warsaw Pact fashion. The West German equivalent also had one tank for the company commander at this time. Unlike today, the West German tank company had only one officer in the command group, the company commander who was usually a captain or major. The second staff member was the company sergeant or company Feldwebel, normally held by a Hauptfeldwebel. The difference was, in East Germany, Hauptfeldwebel was the name for the appointment equivalent to a company sergeant major or first sergeant, but it could be held by a senior NCO, such as a Stabsfeldwebel, or a grade of warrant officer called a Feinrich, which was added to the rank structure in 1979 in Soviet fashion. 
There was no East German rank of Hauptfeldwebel, but in West Germany, the appointment was the Company Feldwebel, which was held by an NCO normally at the rank of Hauptfeldwebel. But in any case, while the East German Hauptfeldwebel rode around in a Ural, the West German company had a company sergeant's troop. At this time, it included an Unimog 2-ton truck and a Mercedes-Benz 5-ton truck. The company troop, which was sort of a command group, included the tank, a half-ton jeep, and three motorcycles for messengers. The West German company also had two replacement crews, a total of six junior enlisted crew members that could fill vacancies. Having these spare crews at the company level allowed platoons to still conduct exercises even when slightly under strength. A tank with even one crew member down is at best significantly degraded in its performance. One level up, most East and West German tank battalions consisted of three tank companies and a staff. The West German equivalent had a much more substantial staff though, with a 183-man staff and supply company versus the 43-man East German battalion staff. In terms of armor, the West German battalion HQ had two tanks and the East German had one. West German brigades had one or two of this type of tank battalion depending on if it was a Panzer or Panzergrenadier Brigade. East German tank regiments, meanwhile, had three of these battalions, while motor rifle regiments had one. But there was also the case of the West German Mixed Battalion. For the 1980s, the West Germans wanted to increase the amount of tank units in the field without increasing the number of armored vehicles in service. This entailed reducing each tank platoon from five, as was the case since the 1950s, to four tanks, reducing the tanks in the company HQ from 2 to 1, and the tanks in the battalion HQ from 3 to 2. They used those savings to create an additional tank company per battalion. This was also done with Panzergrenadier battalions, and the new companies were moved into their own mixed 4th battalion, numbered as the 1st battalion in the brigade basically. In Panzer Brigades, this mixed battalion had two tank companies and one infantry company while Panzergrenadier Brigades had two infantry and one tank company, matching the number of other combat battalions. But this battalion's staff was actually a cadre force that would only be activated for war and exercises. During peacetime, these new companies were actually housed with one of the three original battalions. The East and West Germans had somewhat similar practices when it came to the tank unit organization at the low levels. The biggest difference being the more substantial logistics in the West German battalion and the dimorphism in East German units depending on if they were in a tank regiment or supported an infantry regiment. The platforms were obviously quite different though. I'm not going to get into comparing the specifications of tanks because that's not what I do, but the West Germans had significantly more of the newest Leopard 2s than the East Germans had T-72s. But as a country, East Germany also had about a quarter the population of the West, so keep that in mind as well. East Germany had four motor rifle divisions and two panzer divisions in the first line. The former type each had about 214 T-55 tanks in theory. The 9th Panzer Division had 322 T-72s, while the slightly smaller 7th Panzer Division had 223 T-72s and 40 T-55As in the 1990 handover of equipment. The larger West Germany, on the other hand, had 4 Panzer Grenadier Divisions and 6 Panzer Divisions in its active field army. There were some exceptions, like the 3rd Panzer Division under the 1st Dutch Corps, but broadly speaking, if you were to assume the generic number of subunits at full strength, Panzergrenadier Divisions were meant to have 254 tanks, and Panzer Divisions were meant to have 308. So roughly comparable, although about 34 of these were contained in an armored reconnaissance battalion that supported the division. The East German equivalent had BMP-1s as its heavy hitters. But in terms of fielded maneuver battalions, the West German Panzer Division had five pure tank battalions, two mixed tank battalions, and one mixed Panzergrenadier battalion, in addition to four pure Panzergrenadier battalions. To compare, the East German Panzer Division had ten pure tank battalions and four-ish motor rifle battalions. Four-ish because the East German tank regiment didn't have an infantry battalion. They at most had a motor rifle company each. 
So what the East Germans traded in lack of resiliency at the platoon and company level with only three tanks per platoon, they gained some with more tank battalions in the field for a similar amount of tanks, which is probably more critical in the case of a large-scale conflict. They also fielded more divisions as a proportion of their population than the West. Not that I think this bean counting matters all that much given the West Germans had three times the active tank divisions as the East and fielded arguably a better tank, but I find these sorts of comparisons at least mildly interesting. If you want more info on German armored units, check out this video on the West's Panzer Grenadier units in the 1950s and 60s, their armored infantry force. I'll see you over there.